Meow, the problem with this so-called Node Express app is that if you were to take this and put it in your portfolio and show it to a potential employer, they'd probably be, what the heck is this? this doesn't make any sense. So let's make this look like a real app using a bunch more of Node.js, magical, super awesome stuff. Back in the text editor, we're going to go ahead and add a whole Node.js API to our application. What? A whole API? Man, that's crazy. I thought we were only going to make an application. Man, you really are packing this video with a huge amount of value. Well, thanks. I am the code whisperer. So the cool thing about Express is that it's really flexible. If we say app.get again, we can specify another path and have a completely different piece of code running when we do that. So if I say forward slash API, I can do the whole, the same thing, but use a completely different kind of code. Let's demonstrate this, since if you try to just understand it conceptually, your head may explode and that'll be a big mess. It's hard to clean that stuff off of monitors, trust me. So we're going to assume this works because 100% of the code written by the code whisperer works all the time. So we'll say res.status. And give it a 200, which is the OK status. Why do we use a status every time? Do we have to? Um, I've written a lot of applications where I don't use dot status and it works fine, but I like to use dot status because it looks cool. It's computer, you know, and you can choose different numbers that make you look like a champ. Next new thing, in the above example, we use dot send. But if we use dot JSON, Express will automatically format whatever we want to send as JSON. That is so sweet. So let's put in a object. And I'll give my object a property that'll be an array. I'll call it things. And I'll populate my array of things with, I don't know, a bunch of congruent object. So I'll just give each one a name. And a member. And I'll give our list of things three things. And that's it. So what's going to happen? You just don't know. I don't know. Let's find out. Now, here I am in my browser. If we go to our application slash API, we get an error. Cannot get API. Why is that? Well, when we changed our script, our node application didn't actually restart. So if we restart the script and try and reload its page, we get um, our API information. A list of things all in JSON format. So as you can see, with the one file, we have our API route where we can pass whatever information we want. We can hit another API or do some calculations, whatever. And then at the base, we also have whatever our application is. So let's take this all and wrap it up finally into a fully fledged application.